Reviews. Here we are again, continuing our Metallica run. Yeah, we actually came back to do some more of this. Look what we're doing. We're gonna do. We're gonna do Metallica's second album tonight. And what's that called? Write them all. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. 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 Oh, that's not what it's called. That was. That's a country that album. What it's called. Is it? It's probably <laughs> something absurd. Yeah. Like write them all. There's like steers like running around in the woods or something. Steers and beers? Do they run around in the woods? Or like a field. Okay, okay. whatever. Like country people? Let's let's Shh. Welcome back! Oh, we said that already. Okay. Yes. This is week two. Yep, I've ride right them all. Ride right them episode Cowboy. Part three, not episode three. This is part three. Part three. Wait, let's do this from the start. <laughs> We want to make sure we got it right. Week two. Right them all. Of Metallica. Nope, right. Shit. Part three. Okay. Right them all. Right. No, you're wrong now, too. It's Ride the Lightning. It, oh, it is Ride the Lightning. It's Ride the Lightning. That's what they did. They didn't ride them all. No. They rode the Lightnings. Yes, they did. Where you ride the that's electric chair thing. Yes. Yes. Where they cook you for being bad. I've heard that. I've heard things happen when you are a bad person. You get to ride the lightning, and it basically means that you get fried and dead. Oh, remember that movie where they didn't wet the sponge, and they put them on, put it on his head. Oh yeah. And they cooked. They, was it the Green Mile? I think it was. Where they it cooked, was, they cooked his fucking head. Yep. Yeah, that's bad times. Yeah. You don't want that. What you do want is right there. That's the one. That's what you want. This is the lightning that you want to ride, not the lightning with, like, minus the guy's fucking scalp that was, like, fucking ruined and shit. Yeah, I want to look at that a little bit. Don't look at it. I forget. Why are you a butthole? Oh, there's a electric chair right on there. Did, with, like, some lightning things flicking, like, coming down. It's coming like, right down from the word metallic. Yeah, it ruined your face. Actually, it's going the wrong way right there. Well, no, birth ruined your face, but... <laughs> Accident of birth? <laughs> Different band. <laughs> Different, different band. We might cover that one someday, though. <laughs> we'll do that for you. Yes, only, we, only for you. Because we like most of you. So, a couple of you. Um, so what, so what are you looking at, anyway? What's what's that you're holding right there? I'm holding this album right here, which is Metallica, with the lightning coming down and hitting that the chair, chair. With nobody in it. Which yeah, is, no. I think I would have done this different. Nobody died. I would have done this differently. Well, but you were cover. you were nearly as cool as Metallica in I never will be. In when did this come out? Eighty four. Four. July. I think July nineteen eighty four. This was released. Uh, you're in charge of dates. I was still uh, still a young puppy, and you were still already collecting AARP. I was. That's what you did. <clears throat> I was on uh, Medicare. You are you are so you. Oh my! How fucking old are you? Oh my fucking god! Oh. oh, you're so old. It's my 111th birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the album. Let's mm -hmm. run this one down track by track. 1984, Metallica's follow-up to Kill 'Em All, which is already a stunning debut album. Yep, and then you got your old thrash scene. That's what they're doing. Yep. And they... You know what? They got better. They got way they better. They got better. They got way better. They yeah. went to. They went to. You know what happened? They, what? Went, to, they went to Denmark. Oh, the yeah. land of the Lars Ulrichs. Yeah, Lars Land. Ulrichs, <laughs> whatever the fuck that. Hey. They went to Lars Land and they recorded this. Well, guess what? They didn't get it wrong. No, they did all right. They fucking nailed they did it. All right. They so, nailed it. All right. So you want to go through this track by track? Here let's do it. Bit, yeah. Let's talk about. Talk about. Let's talk about the album tracks. Right, let's yeah. talk about. See what we right. think. Fight fire with fire. Great fucking song. Yeah. Yeah, we re I really like that one. There's it's got there's that little there's really no harmony or melody in this song. It's just a, a straight thrash song, but it's fucking it has a good guitar harmony though. It does. It has a really cool guitar harmony. Yeah, it does. Coming out. Yeah, yeah. So they they did a good job with that one. So in that Denmark. One, in Denmark. I don't know what Denmark brings the, the thanks Denmark the best out of recording. I think that's where Lars sells his paintings or something. His what? His paintings. Oh, I thought you said pink things. Ew. <laughs> what pink well, things? Nipples? Ew. I don't know. Dude, creepy. Does he want him to have? You're, you're going to. Two and a half. 
Thank you, Lars. He's gonna. Here we go again. Lars coming oh, through the window. He's crashing through my windows again. Coming through the window. God damn it. Sorry, Lars. All right, so, yeah, sorry, <laughs> Lars. This fire's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? What's the follow up? Uh, my favorite song on the entire album. Oh. Title track. Bright of Lightning. <sighs> that's, that's pretty beast. Yeah. It's pretty beast. This is a band like like starting to like feel out their sound and understand they could do some longer songs or some shorter songs, but they all, they they started blending in a lot of melody in a lot of these songs, a lot of guitar harmonies. Yes, they this one starts out with it starts out and ends with the same little guitar harmony. Right. Band. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really heavy song. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a longer song. The solo goes forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, studio Kirk. studio version. One of the better Kirk Hammett solos. No, he only uses wah for a little bit no. in it. It's hello, like, Kirk. Hello, hello, wah pedal. Hello, hello, wah. But he, he starts out no wah, and then does a little wah, and then ends with no wah. And it's okay. I can I can I can tolerate. That. Ride the I'm, wah. I'm I'm wah intolerant. Ride the wah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pill for that. There's no, well, I, I don't know. They might be anxiety pills to get you over it or something, but... I have those. This is where Kirk Hammett's wah fetish kind of started. And it wasn't as pronounced as it got later on. No, but he definitely had the surgery to get that thing attached. <sighs> and he liked it, he kept it. It doesn't make you a better guitar player. No, it doesn't. It just makes you wah. It just annoys me. All your solos. <laughs> it's just... Well, yeah, because you're like... It really you're, annoys me. You're a guy who's been playing fucking guitar for, like, what, like 20, 25 years now? and Give or take, yeah. I mean, you know, not everybody likes, like, the wah thing and the solos and whatnot. I mean... I have a wah pedal. I don't even hook it up. But that's kind of the thing. Like, you know, a lot of guitar players are... are um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't fucking know the word, okay? Go look the word up I was thinking. Ready? Did you get it? Okay, good. But whatever that word was that I was thinking of. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Um, like, guitar players tend to like a raw guitar sound. I think so. When they, when they solo, they want to, like, they want everybody to hear every note and every, you know. And when, once you start doing the wah thing, it kind of muddies your solo. Yeah. And makes it sound like you're doing a little something crazy when you're really not. To an untrained ear, it's like, oh my god, he's the greatest guitar player in the world. But no, he's not. He's just yeah, hitting that wah pedal. And it, all it does is, is, is alter the sound of the note. That's all it does. It right. doesn't change the pitch. Right. You know, for those of you mm -hmm. not versed. My in, cigarette went out. That happens like every episode. Not versed okay. in uh, guitar stuff or, or the tech. That's not good. No, I don't Get some of that. What's the next song, motherfucker? <laughs> Give me another song. I can't describe the what thing. I'm not allowed. Oh, I'm sorry. I was doing that. Are you still talking about you know, the what? Nobody cares. You know what? You're right. Oh my god, you hate the wasp so much that you're willing to risk an entire episode for your personal opinion on the fucking wasp panel! No, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't care. Should we go into fucking how much the whammy bar sucks now, too? Should we go into that? Oh, he likes using that thing, too. <laughs> Alright, so... And it does like his whammy bar. We'll, we'll move on to the next song right now, but... Which is... Wasp pedal sucks, and a tremolo arm... Also sucks. Go. Next right. song. Actually, Dave Mustaine, who wrote he didn't, Art of Rise Lightning, he still didn't do it. Called it the cheating bar. It is a cheating bar. All right. Anyway, moving on through. Tony Iommi didn't use that shit. Oh, yes, he did. Maybe. Tony Iommi only remember. had two fingers. Okay. <laughs> and like a face. Like he just. Every now and then he would like ram his guitar into his mouth or did something. He, did he do that? He, I made it. I don't. I don't. No, I made it up. What do you got? Go. I got room the bell tolls. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, wait. Yeah. That. Okay. So, you can't hear it behind us because we don't want you to sue us, YouTube and Lars and all those other people that are part of the Metallica fucking... Okay, I have, I have nothing there. I yeah. have nothing. I mean, they, they really shouldn't. They have enough money. I my money. money. They have my money. <sighs> Your money. 
they, oh, they have tons of my money. This is the first Metallica song I ever really paid attention to. Really? Interesting. Because I was a couple of years later. I didn't get into Metallica until really like when the Black Album came out. Because I was 10 when the or like 10 or 11 when the Black Album came out. 12? Okay. Maybe some other. Alright. No, and so, you know, I mean, I already had... Like, I already had, like, maybe this album, and maybe Justice for All, which we'll talk about later. But yeah. this this was the first song where I went, oh, like, they're not only this this quick, fast, like, you know, double-tempo crazy band. Right, like, this, this is a slower... Slower tempo song. Not yes. A, not a slow song. But his drums really pop on this right. song. The, the he's song doing just... some he's doing some sick shit. He's doing some like crazy like fucking flams and off time beats. And I'm like, this is something I should pay attention to. The song really drives. That's what it does. It yes. really drives. It, yes. It, it really, really listenable. Oh yeah. I mean for, for thrash, it, it's not quite it's not quite thrash. The chorus is is more thrashy than than the rest of it, right? But it's just a really good song. It's it's, it's kind of awesome on the song. simple side. I love this song. I mean, as far as like, well, yeah, because I can play it, style, so that means it's simple. This style of music goes. There's a nice guitar harmony in it. Yeah, which they, they were they did that a lot on this mm-hmm. album and mm-hmm. the next. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't do it all. On, well, they did a little bit on Kill 'Em All. No, not much. Not much. I not really. Back. They really yeah, do. No. no. But this one, the, they got more melodic when it comes to guitar solos. Right. They threw in some good harmonies. Really good stuff. It added an extra dimension to what they were doing. Yeah. It matured. They matured. They did. Ma- they did mature. They musically matured. They did mature. Uh, but yeah, from the Bell Tolls. Slightly there more. Slightly more complicated. Arrangements. Oh yeah, the structures on structure of these songs. They were yeah, they 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 created the thrash sound pretty much, and then as soon as they created it, they went in a whole other direction and recreated what thrash should sound like at the time. Right, and then, and this style would probably hold steady for about ten years after this. Yeah, yeah, and and, and every every thrash band, you know. That's worth listening to, kind of followed suit. Right. All right. So, what's the next song? Oh, really, really, really good song. On I mean, this album, right I, here. I might take back my Ride to Lightning as my favorite song. Fade to Black. Oh. That might be the best one on the album. I, I, I might have to retract my Ride to Lightning. When they, when they, when they basically said "fuck it" and we're going to do like a thrash ballad. Like yes, acoustic guitars. It starts out all acoustic, real, you know, dreary. Yeah, you know. some slinky, sexy. Hammond, Hammond has a really cool guitar. Twelve score. string? Were they doing twelve string? Was the intro twelve string? I don't think so. But well, I guess what? It still sounded great. It still sounded great. I don't care if they were doing it or not. It's, it's, it was just, it was a whole other layer on yeah. what the thrash yeah. movement could do. Hammond has uh, two standout solos on this thing. Uh, the, the, the beginning one, mm-hmm. over the acoustic stuff, is really good, and yeah. then the, the song ends with an extended yeah. thing, and yep. you know, really, really, really good. Uh, if he was using the wah in it, it was so good I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think he was using the wah in this, so good job, Kirk Hammond, yeah. on this song, but this this is, yeah, this is kind of the ear ballad It's... It's kind of your ballad. it's kind of your first classic Metallica introduction for maybe a lot of people because mm-hmm. this was actually like being played on the radio back then because it was a little more accessible. I don't yeah, think it was oh, ever yeah. a single. Well, it was at least a, one single from the a, album. I think it's a bit long to be to be a single, especially in, right in eighty four, eighty five mm-hmm. when this thing mm-hmm. was floating around out there. There was a single, not in the states, but we'll get to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. In a little bit, we're gonna get to that. But you're you're gonna know "Fade to Black" all day long. I mean, yeah. when I was in elementary school, this was played at dances. Yeah, right. And it blew my fucking mind. I'm like, who the fuck are these? Oh, it's oh shit, it's Metallica. I know these guys. How did this happen? Well, guess what? It fucking didn't. If you don't believe me, you fucking ass. Are you fucking questioning me, you fucks? It's right there. Look at it. Look at the back cover. You. 
I need that. <laughs> I can't read the Psalms if it's in Bob. They were questioning me. They didn't think I knew what I was talking about. There They're for a sorry. Are you sorry? Are you sorry? Are you sorry? Okay. Okay. You. I. You Somebody apologize. You are sorry. All right. You apologize. I'm sorry. For, I'm also. I'm sorry. For I'm sorry everyone. for appearing on camera with my unwashed facial hair. So we're even now. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, go. Uh. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Anyway, what? What happened? <laughs> Sometimes, when you're not paying attention, you might get trapped under ice. Oh shit! Especially get, around here. Guess what? You got trapped under ice? Not today. <laughs> Ever? No. <laughs> okay. That never happened. happened. I was very. I was very. I, I knew what I was doing. That, even that's, why, that's why. That's no. why. That's why you. I don't it. like this song. Nor, nor I have ever written a song about being trapped under no. ice because we never have this. And I don't like trapped under no, ice. No, not really. I don't like it. Not really. It's kind of like that, like pedestrian, just thrash for thrash sake. Yeah. Filler song. Yeah, it's not bad. Again. No, it's, it's not, not bad. bad. Metallica wasn't doing bad songs at this point. Every song was good. No, this is nearly perfect. This yeah. album is nearly perfect. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, either this one or the next one, as far as you know, as we looked at it, one of them didn't rate high, and the other one maybe it shouldn't have, but it did anyway. Right. I'm pretty sure it's the next one that did. Not mm -hmm. Trapped Under Ice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Trapped Under Ice is a little bit pedestrian for, yeah. for where for yeah. the bar that they set. Yeah. For thrash at this point. Yeah. And I remember having the tape, and this was the, that was the first song on Simon. The tape? Two. The tape. The tape? We established that there's tapes in the first episode. Part one. Go back oh, to part one. Did watch do part that. one. Uh, no life to leather. We talked about tapes. And we talked about tapes because oh, it only oh my God. existed as a tape. Anyway, did. I had the tape. Ugh. And side B, which... B sides meant a different thing when they're actually as a side B. <laughs> That's true. That was the first song on, on side B. Okay. And uh, if I could skip, like I can on on uh, my phone now. Oh yeah, you couldn't back then. I'd probably skip. You couldn't back then. You I'd had, skipped you this had song. like. You had like 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 marble through the song. Yeah, more times than not, not, I'd skip and ruin your tape player because it. You're pressing the play button or the fast forward down while it's playing, like just enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it will oh, speed yeah. up the tape, and yep. you can still hear. <laughs> yeah. You know where the yep. song stops. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. Enough about how old we are. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay, so they have this song called "Trapped Under Ice," right? The next song is called "Escape." See es what they did? They escaped from the ice. Maybe they escaped from the ice. I don't think that's what they meant, but it certainly flows. Was that like an intro or an outro, or is that a real song? No, it's a real song. Escape is a real song. I think it was a bit subpar again. I shouldn't be talking about this if I don't know this. You should know the song Escape. I know it, but really? What yeah, is it's it? not bad. It's a Metallica song. Is it like is it like a like a like a an add-on to Trapped Under Ice? Is it like a second part? No, Trapped Under just... Ice where they escape the ice and they fucking go and fight hobgoblins? I don't know what it's about. That's cool. That'd be cool. We don't listen to the words. Oh, that'd be cool, though. Hobgoblins, kids. I was just pointing out how it kind of flows with Trapped Under Ice. Okay. And the next song is called Escape. I don't think they're related. I could be wrong. Mm. If I'm wrong, point it out for us in the comments okay. thing below. But I don't think they're related songs. It's just funny that the first song on side B is Trapped Under Ice and the second song is called Escape. All right. All right, it's still forgettable. So yeah, no, it, it is. It's it not. Is. It's not it on par with the rest of the rest of the songs. I bet you the next song is fucking on par with some sexy shit. Oh, you mean the one that probably classifies as one of the best songs they ever did? Oh, that one. Would it be Creeping Death? Creeping Death. That's a thing. Oh my fucking god! Do you know that song? Creeping yeah! It's another one that they play. See, I nailed that. At, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Okay. At every single concert. Oh, yeah. To this day. Yep. They always do Creeping Death. Yeah, always. Always. Because it's, it's, it's again, like, for the, for the first four, maybe five. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Catastrophe is 
struck. Bear down. There's a bear down. Twerk, let me, let me, let me. Oh, you're not even picking it up. Just like, <laughs> let me reach down here and get that. I you can't reach it. Look, I, I got some on you. When we the first time that I got some on you. That. Oh, God. oh, no, I wore half of that. Oh, no. This is usually when a show is supposed to end. But we got a little more. We're just getting started. All right, good. So, what was I saying? Oh, oops. yes. I dropped my beer. Yeah. I didn't say oops. I said, motherfucker. The dog's like down there getting drunk on my beer. My spilled beer sauce. <laughs> or something. But, yeah. What we were talking about Creeping Death. We were talking about Creeping I think Death. Creeping Death was the only single from this album, if I'm not mistaken. You're right. And I don't even think it was released over here in the States right away. I think it was like a... French or oh right, or right 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 right. But the important thing about that single is it had a B side, B sides, mm. and this is the first time we got to hear "Am I Evil?" Yes, and "Let's Creep." Yes, and the way they did them, they can trick you into thinking that they were always Metallica. Oh, also. clearly, yeah, you wouldn't. But you they're wouldn't not have any idea. They're obscure from obscure bands, and that's when you went back and you researched. Before Wikipedia and before all this shit, you, you found a way to research your bands. Even in the 80s, you found a way to research. You saw, there always was. You saw the liner notes and you're like, oh, written by blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, they're not nice. they're not members of Metallica. Right. Then yeah. you, you look, you, you figure out how to find their names. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Yeah. And if you were a Metallica fan at this time... You you did you you tried to find every single note they were playing, and they released a single you couldn't get. You found a way to get the single because you wanted every song they were performing. You just wanted more. Yeah, just, yeah. The second you heard the album and you were done listening to it, it was like, okay, I'm ready for more. Mm -hmm. When's the next one coming out? Mm -hmm. Oh, three years from now. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, but wait. They cover this song, and that's hard to get. They cover this right. song, and that's hard right. to get. Or these bands that influenced them, maybe they kind of sound like Metallica a little bit. Let's right. go look for them. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we did. Yeah. That's what we all did. Yeah. A lot of time wasted. I could have, like, invented something. But why did my life suck so much back then? I think that's why. Because I, I just... I just, spent, I just looked spent, up Metallica we, songs we, and didn't we, care about life. We spent all our time trying to find other things that sounded like the music that we liked. Okay, right. <laughs> and right. Instead of, like... Studying or doing right. things that matter. Yeah, yeah. Like me, like me pouring my beer on the floor, and now my my fat rolls are covered in beer right now. So we should probably move on to the next song, because otherwise I'm just gonna sit here and marinate in oxy goodness, and my fat's gonna become even more glory. You're gonna want to drink my midsect. You're, what? What? Oh fucking god. Okay, anyway, next song, go. Call it to Go. Oh, oh, wait a second. I know that song. Yeah. Guess what? That was a good song. That was a really good song. Did that end the album? It ended the album. It's an instrumental. It is an instrumental. It's like eight minutes long. And it's fantastic. It's pretty fantastic. They showed off some of their fucking studio trickery and, and, and made some, like, some great things happen. Guess and what? That, there's a writing credit on that one. You. Oh, Mr. Mustaine? Mr. Mustaine. I'm only Was he gonna... still being credited? Yep, he's a, he got a credit on that one. Wow. Actually, he took a, a piece of that song and incorporated it into Hangar 18, mm -hmm. which someday will do their discography. Was it the last time Mustaine was, was credited on a Metallica album? There's one more, and it's debatable, but I'm going to make you wait for it. Oh. And it will be the last time I mention Dave Mustaine's name in a Metallica episode. No, it won't. No, it will. He's a fucking liar. I'm making a promise to you. No, oh, look what Kirk Hammett did. I bet you they mistake and do it better. He's going to do that. You don't even fucking kid me. Should I get it out of the way right now? The only other thing I have oh, to say? Okay, do it. <laughs> do it. Mustaine complained to a magazine. Oh, magazine. A magazine. They did, did an interview with him. This is back early 80s. <sighs> that Kirk Hammett got rated like the number one guitar player in metal. By ripping off all his solos from mm. the life to leather. Well, you know what? He wasn't wrong. 
No, he's not wrong. He pretty much did almost note for note. Take everything. Did Dave Mustaine play them better? Well, that's that's hard. To, that's debatable because Mustaine had to do it in one take on a demo, and Hammett got to do it in the studio and got to do it as many times as he needed to okay. get it right. Right, right, right. And, it, and it's well established, <clears throat> even just from tonight, what we were listening to. Mm -hmm. He needs to take his time and take a lot of takes. Hammett, that is. <sighs> okay, so. There we, we just made fun of Kirk Hammett a little tiny bit, but not too much. We'll make fun of him more. From here on out, I'm going to try not to make too much fun of Kirk Hammett. I cannot promise he won't do the same to Lars. Oh. Oh, no. He's just begun. All right. We'll get into mushroom-headed Lars. See? Wait, <laughs> is that bad? We'll get into him more later. And we'll talk about how he forgot to play drums, but we're not there yet, because Lars is still the king of the drum throne in 1984, yep. and 1986, and 1988. Yep. We're going to get to that. Lars is still the king. We're not going to talk about Napster yet, because you know what did. That didn't happen until... And we're not going to talk about how fucking dumb he is in his stupid dumbness. 